Hello and welcome to Creating a Human Rights Culture, which aims to promote a lived awareness of the interdependency and indivisibility of human rights principles in our minds, hearts, and bodies, that is, dragged into our everyday lives. What, after all, is freedom of speech to a person who is homeless and lives in a world at war? Therefore, it is dedicated ultimately to the application of the Human Rights Triptych, which in brief consists of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights at its center, the conventions, that is, international treaties on the right, and implementation measures on the left. Hello, I'm Joseph Franca again, and welcome to another episode of Creating a Human Rights Culture, which calls for a lived awareness of human rights principles in our minds and hearts and integrated into our everyday lives. Now, this is part two of our discussion on the United States report to the United Nations on the Convention Against Torture, which ultimately is an international treaty which must be ratified, uh, implemented by the United States according to Article 6 of the U.S. Constitution, which says that all treaties ratified must become law. So this is part two of our discussion. I'm here with uh, Martha Spiegelman. She is the uh, group coordinator of Amnesty International, and Mohammed El Ghadi, um, who um, is an adjunct professor at Springfield College, and I must add, is also a survivor of torture himself, 180 days in a Sudanese prison. So we left off with uh, you, Martha, talking about your part of the convention. It's been divided into three right. uh, parts, and um, just keep on going, and then we'll have Mohammed. All right. Thank you. There are two sections uh, in this report that relate to juveniles in detention. That is, they have not had hearings, they have not had trials, and also juvenile prisoners who are serving sentences. And these two parts emphasize two very important provisions that should be made for juveniles. Uh, provisions that the UN recommends under its UN standard minimum rules for administration of juvenile justice. And these two are no solitary confinement for juveniles, no, no solitary confinement under any conditions for any offense, and that includes capital offenses, no solitary confinement for juveniles. And the other provision is um, no life sentences, no lifetime sentences. Again, no matter what the offense is, no lifetime sentences for juveniles. So those are, uh, I mean, if you think about it um, in terms of somebody who's 14 or 15 years old who has been shipped off to prison and uh, would be spending the rest of his or her life in prison, I think you would be um, somewhat concerned and sympathetic about the situation. I'd like to highlight at, at, at this moment something that's um, probably been seen by a lot of people. The film made by Ava DuVernay entitled When They See Us. It's been showing on HBO in the last week or so about the um, about the investigation and the confessions, the supposed confessions and the sentencing of five young uh, black and Hispanic boys from the ages of 13 to 16 back in New York City in um, around 88, 89. They all eventually confessed and then took back their confessions because they had all been uh, treated uh, to intense interrogation and confusion over a period of, a, of like a full day without the presence of their parents, without any legal counsel, and they were scared to death, and they confessed, and later on when they had their parents' uh, advice... This is Central Park Five. Central, right? okay. what's known as the Central Park Five. Um, they ended up being convicted and going to jail, and about 12 years or so later, 
it was found that a single individual had committed the crime. It was a rape and a beating of a woman in Central Park. Um, a single individual she was who had white. nothing to do with these five who were taken into custody uh, confessed. And there was one DNA sample on the, on the woman, and that DNA sample matched the person who confessed. His name is, oh. I won't say his name. Um, so the, the, the men, now men, because they had been in prison so long, were released. I don't think there has ever been an apology by the city, mm. by the prosecutor's office, by anybody. And they got um, a settlement from New York City among the three of them. Mm. I think it was over $40 million. But they didn't get it because the city was generous and said, oh, we did a terrible thing. This is awful. We better, we better recompense them in some way. They, they sued to get recompense, and they won. They won that. But oh. that film uh, tells you something about cruel, inhuman, and degrading treatment. What happened was they confessed, took the confession back, but they failed to uh, convince a jury because the prosecution really drummed up evidence that Mm -hmm. in it, that, that just seemed to convince the jury. And I'd like to mention one other kind of abuse, and that is people who are hauled in by the authorities, usually by a sheriff's office, for minor offenses like having a broken taillight on a car, mm -hmm. and they're held they're detained. They're not, they're not convicted of anything. They're detained. They're held because, why? Because they can't come up with bail money. And that hasn't come into this report that mm. I noticed. I didn't see it. But mm. it, is, it is really a terrible abuse. It certainly is cruel, uh, people being held because they can't find a relative who can put $500 up. This is something that is used in many jurisdictions as an income stream for the sheriff's office. And uh, I just bring it up as an example that troubles me a lot. So those, those um, particularly the, uh, the, the plight of juveniles in detention and in in prison uh, troubles is very troubling, and it troubled this committee when it issued its report. So thank you for listening to my story. Thank you. Um, it's a pleasure listening to your story. Thank so, you. Um, okay, uh, Mohammed El Ghadi. Uh, so when you uh, gave me this uh, assignment or this no, homework, okay. <laughs> dear Joe. So I looked at it like, oh, death penalty, uh, excessive p police brutality, electric uh, discharge weapons, sexual violence and rape, and U.S. military. So wow, this is almost like everything related to my own story, to everything what happened to me. Because first I thought like uh, death penalty is as we have a stand in Amnesty International, we are against the death penalty. But unfortunately, many, many people who are members of Amnesty International, especially who are coming from a different country, eh, they don't strongly support that part. And sadly, like uh, I was one of these people a long time ago. And when I started like reading, reading more and more, when of course also on my own episode, I thought like, no, this is, it makes a lot of sense, Amnesty International and every single human rights defender to stop to work against death penalty. Uh, so this is a little bit intro. Uh, the death penalty article 25 in this uh, report speaks about like one good thing that's during the time of the implementation of the report to the convention, uh, there were only six states abolished capital punishment during that period, which is a good thing. So we talk about the 2009, 2014 at that time. 
Uh, and it was very strong. We read over the last maybe few years many, many real stories, people who were proved in prison for 30, 40 years uh, because they did not commit that crime and there was no any kind of a good scientific evidence at that time, the DNA. So we know that uh, death penalty does not work and many people who are actually like on this row, they did not commit the crime, but no one will believe them. Uh, two major things here was uh, concerned in the report that torture con uh, regarding torture and death penalty was uh, uh, ex excruciating pain and prolonged suffering during the, I can't even say it, yeah. during the uh, execution itself. And uh, I asked my brother once, he uh, was, uh, he passed away, uh, he was a medical doctor and about this, is this kind of report, he said yes, even people say like they give some kind of uh, anesthesia or some people, people know. Still now, the medicines, they don't know exactly when people, they are dying, what kind of pain they are feeling. Just imagine if it was prolonged more than, because in many, many cases of execution, it will take longer cases. And this is exactly happened in Arizona, Oklahoma, and Ohio. This is the report. Uh, the other point regarding the death penalty is the long waiting years in prisons. And we know that like the average is between 19 to 22 years until you get executed. And uh, this is a horrific time. You don't know when this is happening, uh, when they will come and take you. Uh, during this time, many people will try to kill themselves because they cannot take the weight. And this resonates like to my own case, like when I was in prison, even I was only for 118 days, uh, but the torture was happening every night. And usually the torture will happen at, after the curfew at night, so because it's in a paralegal uh, detention center, it's spread all over the capital city, Khartoum, and so they don't want to do it during the day so people cannot hear the, the screams of the torture uh, when the torture happening. So what happened uh, when I was reading the report here and the, the torture, the waiting, the long waiting, I just imagine myself like when we were, we were 11 in one cell. The cell cannot like survive more than two or three people. We were 11 in that one. We, don't, we did not know at that time when the door will open, is it going to be the dinner meal or it's only one meal a day. So, or is going to snatch one person to go for torture. So always, and that torture, Incredible. and they are very cruel. And they don't make you to expect when this will happen. So this is exactly what was happening here when I read about the death penalty. You don't know when you will be taken for, you know, like execution. And that sometimes at the last moment when you are ready to go, it will come, it will be stay. So that's a legal word, the stay, right? So the know. yeah, the judge will say like oh, a stay. Yeah, a yeah. stay. A yeah. stay, yeah. Stay of execution. Okay. <sighs> so this is one point in the very, very troubling to me in the report. The second one, the, the excessive use of force and police brutality. And the major case here during that time it was uh, uh, it was at Chicago, Chicago Police Department commander. Yes, uh, called that was the, in there. Yeah, as a commander, uh, what's his name? Something in Birch. Birch. Yeah, Birch, yeah. Yeah, Dave Birch, yeah. But before that, th the report noticed very clearly there was specific targeting for uh, racial profiling group, African American and Latinos, immigrants, and LGBTI too. LGBT people come being targeted more than other people. This is very strange, yeah. I, it did not come to my mind at all, like how they target these people. Usually LGBT yeah, people are very, very peaceful people. Yeah. I just want to interrupt the, in the field, they talk about people in multiple jeopardy or mm. intersectionality. So mm. if you're LGBTQIA, mm. I would say, mm. and you're also African American, oh, yeah. Hispanic, mm. you're in like that triple jeopardy. Yeah. Mm. And it's a serious mm. problem. So yeah. a lot of this is uh, sometimes more yeah. serious than people that aren't anyway. Then. So the report also noticed uh, with a major concern that uh, there were only 20 uh, investigations resulted from in a three, uh, 3,300, no, sorry, 30, 330 uh, 
330 police officers were criminally, criminally prosecuted. Mm. So this is a huge number mm. during only four years. And, but also what's troubling more is that the police uh, commander in Chicago, for almost like uh, 19 years, he was doing all this kind of uh, brutalities during his uh, time when he was in command, all these brutalities was happening. And also there was no any kind of data, available data in the report like to have these people because they was about torturing people because they said, well, there was a statute of limitation for the police, so they could not collect it. So mm -hmm. this is one of the major thing here, the report asking for enhanced collecting data on torture and the police brutality. Uh, the third point and uh, concern here is the electric discharge weapons and tasers. Tasers is actually, this is a torture. Do we know that like many United States, uh, United Kingdom, and a number of other European countries are actually one of the major uh, exporter of these devices to the dictatorship. They know oh. it is going to uh, Sudan uh, during uh, Idi Amin time in, uh, in Uganda, mm. uh, during, uh, not Hila Silas, the guy who dictator, dictator came after him in Ethiopia. But anyway, this is here. We know that these tasers are used for torture in prison not again to or disperse riots or anything, no again is it. I'm one of the person who suffered from this one, yeah, uh, torture, you don't know the torture. And one of the weird things like for this kind of uh, torture, they use soft areas behind ears, testicles, and you don't expect it when you are being like yeah. interrogated when that like the hit would come. And when the torture happened, when one of these uh, tasers it, you convulsed, or I'm not sure is this the right word in yeah. English, oh, convulsed, yeah. and you spread like you jumped like you don't know. You hit, I hit my head, I hit my, many times during this year. Yeah, thanks and for this, sharing this, that. This, yeah, sorry. these are really like devices legally uh, uh, manufactured in this country and the United Kingdom. These are the two major countries. And now, of course, uh, it was outsourced to China. China is making it like I think Soon it will be uh, sold in the dollar tree. <laughs> uh, this is painful, I know. Well, yeah, they just might. Yeah, so yeah. sexual violence and rape uh, is the police in the U.S. military. This is another case, and I think United States during that report we are doing some kind of progress, but it's not enough. I feel like even after that time we started, we doing more and more here because. Uh, it, uh, it, what's the movement? It was in me. It was me too. Me, me too. Me too. Yeah. Me oh, too. Yeah, it, yeah. it spread everywhere, and people now they are taking this very serious. And uh, the report said, like we need, we welcome the result, but we need more information, and we need more here. And they suggested some kind of good uh, comments. So this is what I, I really appreciate about this kind of report. If we keep doing this report, because it's a lot part of it every four years or every five years, we can enhance the general human rights in this country. And every, uh, of course, if every country are doing this. This is the only country, unfortunately, like I, I keep reading, you'd, I think England also issued very strong one every five years, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. All, all the countries yeah. that yeah. ratified it, it's roughly yeah, 150. But, yeah, I but I, I read one of the reports, like uh, yeah. one of the Egyptian reports, is, is bogus, it's nothing there. It's nothing of the facts because it's done by a government. People who are paid by the government working, even the, the human rights commissioner in Egypt or in Sudan would be like supervising. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, they don't mention and anything. There's a whole school yeah. of thought that that's a whitewash. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. a whitewash. The first wash. time they use yeah. a white pejoratively, usually mm. it's black, mm. bald, blacklisted, yes. but that's another story. Yeah. That's a whole school of mm. thought, but we yeah. have to keep on after them. This yeah. is why you have amnesty. Yeah, I'm looking forward for the, our discussion here about like how we connect these uh, three parts together in the discussion, because I would love to talk a, a little bit about the confession and how the confession get from people used to, and then later send you to a solitary confinement or being uh, sent to be for a death penalty. And we know under torture, I will, say anything yeah. i will say <laughs> and unfortunately and i saw this in my I eyes too. i saw this people will have like a uh, you know like crying 
and punish you. They order you to punish or uh, sla uh, lash another person. Because yeah. if you don't do this, we'll do this for you. Yeah. So we they, or they order and they order you yeah. to uh, mm -hmm. to confess to something because otherwise uh, yeah. there will be mm -hmm. there will be uh, punishment mm -hmm. exacted on mm -hmm. your family members. And your family. Yeah. So mm -hmm. so you're gonna give in. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, when when not Trump, when not. when when uh, Donald Trump says torture works, That's what he, said. he is so he is so so wrong, dumb, so, He's so wrong, stupid. Yeah. Like because I that. I've said this before and on this on on this uh, program in the past. If if some if I were suffering torture, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would probably admit to almost anything. I, I think. Would. Mm. Yeah. Why Why not? Yeah. And. So it doesn't work. It, you you get exact. <laughs> you get no result whatsoever. You get either no result or you get uh, uh, false. Yeah, false, false information. information. Yeah. So it doesn't. Because you it are doesn't like work. people under torture are very smart. I know immediately what that guy wants to say. Like, I will of course like hold myself for a while and say, but hey, if you want me to say it, I will say it. Just get me out of here. Unfortunately, I got out of there like after 118 days. 118. Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And and uh, and I I go back to the fact that it's it's not always torture, especially if you're dealing with uh, people who may have uh, limited uh, education or have um, a poor self-image. Mm -hmm. uh, they can be coerced just by being told. Mm -hmm. That you're not worth anything. Yeah. Um, nobody mm -hmm. cares about you. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. there may not be physical mm -hmm. uh, torture, but there's enough uh, yeah. going mm -hmm. on, um, enough abuse, mm -hmm. verbal abuse, that that you believe that yeah. you may even believe that you did something yeah. that you didn't do. Yeah, you may times, even get it into your mind. Mm -hmm. The New York Times had an article, I think it was last week, mm -hmm. about um, a facility for people that have disabilities mm -hmm. and were quote unquote mentally retarded that mm -hmm. the caretakers would hit them while they were mm -hmm. eating mm -hmm. uh, dinner and lunch and they're afraid to eat dinner and lunch. They'd hit them, they'd abuse them, they'd call their yeah. names, front yeah. page of the New York Times. And like you said before, Martha, that's a form of degrading uh, treatment, right? And right. that has to that has to mm -hmm. has to change. Can I say something positive? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, I tried to at the beginning. Yeah, but, you did, of course. But I no, tried. Yeah, you did. Yeah. yeah say something. Report. Something uh, positive, positive about our local community. I work in the field of uh, human services uh, for the last twenty years, and I really appreciate how our police department here in Amherst, Good. specifically, how they're dealing. I work with uh, 55 uh, people with mental uh, issues here living in the community independently. And of course, during crisis, and we call uh, Amherst police, and they were all like, they always like do very professional how they deal with these people. They will never go and arrest or using a taser. I never saw any taser here. I went to the police department many times. They don't have these tasers. And they managed to de-escalate the person. And wow, I, when I ask a number of the police, it's like we go through a lot of uh, a lot of training here, locally here. Our police commandment, I'm sorry, I, don't, I forgot her name. She always believed we can avoid like any kind of confrontation. It's wonderful. Yeah, this is something really positive. I, this is something I would love to see here because I know there is many other communities here in the U.S. who are really good, yeah, in dealing. The the yeah, um, the great. report in several places that I was reading the report. Uh, emphasizes uh, training and yeah. uh, of personnel, training yeah. of police, training of guards, training of mm -hmm. uh, investigators yeah. in um, in knowing when someone can't be pushed mm -hmm. and knowing yeah. how to treat people. And that's that's um, and they bring up the report brings up. Uh, standards, several mm -hmm. several acts mm -hmm. like the Rape Elimination in Prison mm -hmm. Act. I didn't even know there was such a thing, but there is, and uh, obviously it must and the have. The viewers now know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> obviously, yeah. it must have certain recommendations, certain procedures that are to be followed, and probably many of the guards and and uh, police officials don't even know about this act. I bet you, I bet you dollars to yeah. donuts they don't even know about this act. Yeah. By the way, there's a great um, 
training manual by the United Nations called Human Rights and Training in Law Enforcement. Mm. Oh. Uh, that is a wonderful mm. uh, document. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You could just Google that. Yeah, well, that, that's, the kind of, that's the kind of document uh, and, and others like it uh, that have standards that should be, should be taught to all people who have that kind of responsibility, police and prison guards and other staff like that. Okay. Let me, let me ask you guys a question, uh, because you're members of Amnesty. Um, there was a um, place, uh, it was called the School of the Assassins in Fort Benning, Georgia. Oh, Where yeah. they used to School train. School of the Americas. Uh, now yes. they, they changed the name. Mm. That's what yeah. you do when mm. you get in half. And it used to train people that uh, would go to Latin America. Mm -hmm. um, not only allegedly, I mean, it was proven. And mm. uh, people were constantly protesting. Mm. And uh, the guy that led the protest, he was uh, Father Roy Bourgeois, was put in prison for a couple of mm. years. Yeah. And I don't know the circumstances. But I was surprised that that School of the Americas and mm. International Cooperation or something, mm. it wasn't mentioned in the report. And I'm just wondering what's going on. Is that, is that uh, School of the Americas? No, it's around? no longer. Yeah, it's it's I don't think it. I don't think it exists now. Yeah, no. but, but there may but sort there, of spread out, or yeah. there may I'm be something. There may be something, and as you said, spread out. It may. It may have been um, uh, not. You know, not having this one mm. focus that a lot of people knew mm. about and protested mm. about. So instead, mm -hmm. maybe they've they've. Uh, Distributed uh, similar kinds of schools yeah. in various places, and we don't know about. And we them. don't know about them. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. And that's of course, during that during the time of uh, Bush, w George W. Bush, they were always like they were uh, extraditing or sending uh, torture torture people to the what's it called the black sites. Yes. So yes. they did not need to do it here. So they right. would send them to Syria, Egypt, uh, Morocco, uh, nice. Ethiopia. This, and, and, and Pakistan. These were the five countries at that time they were being used here. And we know that like when we are sending someone to Syria or Egypt, that person, oh, we need this information and we will get, from, so it will be torture and the person will get the information there. Uh, if you remember at, uh, when uh, Donald Trump came to power, uh, I'm sorry, you, I'm still using the dictator country that came to power. That's okay. <laughs> so when he was elected... Notice we have about 10 seconds. When he seconds. came to office. So, yeah. oh, so sorry. We try are, to wrap up. Yes. So when he, uh, I, maybe we should like wrap up. It's, it's the end of it. Wrap yeah. up. Thanks, everyone. No, we, See you again. Take care of yourself <laughs> and take care of others as needs be. I think he will, he will ask you like to do it. Like <laughs> oh, you want to do the ending again? Or? Yes, because we did not do it. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. It was my mistake. The ending? Okay. So um, I'm okay. Cut, cut the f f part, my part. Yeah. Okay. I will do it after. Uh, okay. So we'll start again. Okay. I notice we have ten seconds left. Uh, do you have anything uh, profound or not profound to say at the end? Each of the you only know? thing I'd like to say is that Amnesty, the local chapter, does a table on Saturdays near the farmers market, okay. uh, usually from ten to noon. Yeah, for the last forty <laughs> years. Okay, and you can write uh, yeah. to get political mm -hmm. prisoners out of out of prison. Mm -hmm. And, and this is how I got released from prison. Thanks for people like this here. This okay, story. and any thank you. Words yeah. of wisdom or lack uh, of well, like a torture does not work. At like uh, President Trump was believing, and he we know that he's collecting more of this kind of people from third world countries, bring them here. One of them is the ambassador of Sudan, Muhammad Atta, uh -huh. which uh, uh, he was mainly brought here so he can coordinate and facilitate the uh, torture uh, in Sudan. So anyone like we need information will be sent over there. Luckily, the revolution started in Sudan and the guy was ousted of his position and he fled the United States because he knows that most of the torture survivors in this country were, uh, were following him. So he okay. went to Turkey. Thank you for sharing and thank you for viewing. Hope to see you again. We'll definitely have a sequel after the second report comes out. So take care of yourself and take care of others as needs be.